Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Prosser. I'm going to take you through lesson seven. It's all about the draw loop. So let's get started. Um, right here you'll see there's several different parts. It's kind of a longer lesson, but some of its videos and things like that. So we'll be doing a couple of new pieces of code and it's going to explain that as we go through. Two is a video. You can watch that on your own. Three is the first kind of time you're looking at this new code. So the main new code here is this green um, bracket, basically. And the key to know about this green bracket is what happens inside this happens over and over and over. It's a loop. So if I run this, you'll see it's going to over and over draw this ellipse. And remember, with the ellipse, if you forget, the X and Y are the position. The first two numbers are the position. So what it's doing here is it's creating an ellipse over and over at a random X and Y position. And that's why you see all the dots appearing in different places. Now, moving on, this next step kind of talks a little bit more about this draw loop, but let's go into playing with it. So step five has us add to this draw loop. So here it says add to the code so that you're drawing orange circles and um, it looks like this image to the right. So here I'll move myself for a second. Here you can see the image that it should be creating. So let's take a look at that. Right now it's just gonna make those green circles. So we're gonna basically do this exact same thing. We're going to fill with a new color this time we need orange. And then we're gonna create a new ellipse. Now, if I were to run it like this, right now it's going to recreate over and over this orange circle, which is not what we want. We want random circles. So let's go ahead and use this random number. Now, the question is where does it go? And I want you to think about that. If I change these, I think these end up needing to be 50 each. If I run this, you'll see the circles the now, is now the right size, but it's not moving. So I'll let you figure out these random numbers should be put in these first two. And remember, if you change the random numbers, it should be zero to something. And what's cool about that is you could have it be zero to 50 or zero to 100, but you want it to be zero to 400 because remember 400 is the far right and it's the far bottom. So that's why these random numbers should be zero to 400 because you want them to be able to randomly appear on the whole screen. Moving on. Now, other things. Um, you're gonna have to figure this out. I'll let you do that. I'm not gonna tell you the answer. For seven, it says run the code discuss it and try changing the frame rate. So you have something new here. You have frame rate, it's world.framerate. And if you drag it in, it will automatically create one of these little purple variable brackets where you're saying, okay, frame rate, it's basically this. It's the same thing as this X equals something because you're saying, okay, the frame rate is the X and I'm gonna set it to something. Now you set this at the beginning, you don't set it down here. So I'm gonna delete these. Let's see, can I delete? You can just click and drag them off. So here the frame rate is 10. So if I run this, you'll see the speed and you try changing the number and you'll see what different frame rates do. Now, 30 is what we usually use. So it says usually the frame rate is 30. 30 frames per second is usually what we have for films. So you might try 30, you might try slower. Try that out so you can see what the frame rate does. And let's move on. I'm gonna, well, let's see. Sprite properties, this will talk a little bit about different sprite properties. Now, this is really important because this is where you're going to get into movement by changing your sprite's position or rotation, the size of it, whether or not it's visible. Those are all things you can do with your sprites. And what you end up doing is you, you now this is a little confusing. We'll get to it and you can see it. Let's see it in action. So here, so in our function, if we look at this, we've, okay, we have two sprites. We have a pencil sprite and a brush sprite. Here it says background's gonna be white. Okay, pencil.x. That means the position of the pencil 
for its x position. So right now up here we set it to be 100, but here we're saying, okay, it's going to be a, a random number between 100 and 110, and that's going to be the x of the pencil. Now the brush's x is going to be 300. Now that's not very exciting because you'll see it's going to redraw this over and over. Think about what's going to change. The stuff with a random number is going to change. So if I run this, you'll see the pencil is now moving back and forth very quickly be and really in a randomized pattern. It's actually not just moving back and forth because its X position is changing between 100 and 110 each time this loop runs. Because remember, this is a green, this green part is a loop. It's going over and over and over again. So here it says edit it to make the second sprite shake like the first one. So your job for this is to make the brush do the same thing. The problem is if you use the same random numbers, so if I do that, because you're saying, okay, well, I want it to move because I want it to change the position every time this runs. It's going to come up with a new random number. But if I do 100 and 110 and reset and run that, they're going to be on top of each other. So your job is figure out what a good position would be for the brush. Moving on, here you're adding a draw loop. So you're adding it to the bottom of the program, and then you have to move the blocks that need to be inside the draw loop. Now, the key is, what do you want it to do over and over? So here, if I draw, grab that draw loop, I need to think, okay, what do I want it to do over and over? For sure, I want it to over and over draw the sprites, right? That's really important. Now, the question is, what part of this is going to tell it to change over and over? And if we take a look at the image on the right here, we're going to see it moves kind of jerkily up and down. I don't have to change any of these blocks. I want you to figure out, okay, what would you do to, let's see, what would you do? Would you drag in the background? Would you drag the random positioner for Y? Um, do you need to add this stuff in? Think about what does this loop need to do over and over and over? The stuff that comes before the loop, it'll do, and then the loop is what repeats. So you don't need all of this in the loop. So consider that when you go through this one. 11 is where we get to run the program, add code to make an alien shake, and move on with the program. All right, so we run it. And if we take a look at this over here, it wants us to make it look like this. So the only thing we need to do is make this alien shake in the same way this alien is shaking. So let's take a look at this alien's code. So we've got green alien and pink alien. These are really helpful labels. <laughs> Makes it very easy to know which variable is which sprite. So here we have green alien wrote dot rotation. So we're saying, okay, the green aliens rotation is going to be equal to a random number between negative five and five. Now, and then it says draw. Now I'm going to show you, okay, if we want to go to sprites and make the pink alien rotate, because that's what we're doing. We're making it rotate like this guy here. If I draw this in underneath or drag that in underneath, First, I need to change it to the right sprite, pink alien. And then here, if I rotate it to, let's say 10, and I reset it, it's going to rotate one time and it will continually draw that over and over, but it's not randomly moving position. So you need to add in the random number here. Now it is kind of fun to play with the random number because yeah, you need to do these same numbers if you want it to move just like this guy. But if you were to do between zero and 90, because 90 degrees is a right angle, we're going to see it move that much, quite a bit. So if I run it, we're going to see him move a lot more than the other guy. So think about it's going to be moving it clockwise. So that's kind of hard to do with this video, but think of a clock going clockwise. Oh, it's, oh man, it's opposite in the image. Okay. So this is clockwise. <laughs> so you want to think positive is going to be moving clock. Positive is moving clockwise. 
negative is moving the other way. It's a little weird, but experiment with the numbers and you'll see how it works. It's kind of fun to play with. And then lastly, this is talking about animating what you created in the last project. So for example, here's my little dog image and maybe I want my dog, we're gonna practice doing a draw loop. You only need one draw loop. You don't have multiple draw loops. You just have one and you throw all the code you need in that. So the nice thing is I can click and drag and say like, I want a bunch of this stuff to be redrawn at once. That's very helpful. Anyway, I'll show you what I mean. If I click and drag the loop, so the first thing I need, okay, I need it to do stuff for me. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I want it to, in this case, I'm going to say I want the dog's X position to change. So I'm going to say sprite X is equal to, and I'll say a random number between, um, he's in the middle of the screen, so maybe from... 150 to three or 250. We'll try that. So now I'm saying, oh, and now I need to change the name of the sprite. Okay, so I said it was dog. So let me change it to dog. Now the little error went away because I'm like, oh yeah, you used the right name. Next, if I run this, here's what happens. Hmm, nothing. Because I didn't tell it to draw the sprites over and over. So in here, let's try it now. Ooh, but there's a new problem. It's not wiping away the background or like it's not wiping away the old version. So to fix this, you have to think, okay, I want it to redraw the dog, but I also need it to redraw the background first because then it's basically painting the new background over the old dog. So for example, if I just grab the background here, and paint that first. Here you'll see it's painting the blue background over and over. Um, now, that's not very helpful. I want my other stuff. So actually, I'm going to click and drag. And you'll see I can click and drag and move all that stuff in here. Now, what it's going to do is in this loop, it's going to redraw all the background stuff and my text, the dog, and it's going to do all that over and over. And now it's doing what I want it to. Okay. Now, if you are finding that your dog, maybe a, maybe you want the text over the dog, make sure you draw the text after you draw the dog. Um, but that's about it. I, this is the basics. If you're thinking my dog is moving too fast or whatever, remember you can change the frame rate at the beginning. You can say, I want the frame rate to be 10. And if I run it now, it's going to be slower. Now, if you're thinking, I really don't want my dog or my sprites to just do this back and forth, it's kind of boring. Don't worry. The next lesson is going to talk about how to make it like move across the screen and things like that. This is just how to get started. So congratulations on making it through. Enjoy um, playing with this. It's kind of fun to start making things move around on the screen. Take care, everybody.